Hi everyone, welcome to Wool and Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. I'm coming to you from just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia, and I hope that you are having some beautiful weather wherever you are. It is hot and sunny here and we are in tank tops and shorts. And the kids are outside, I'm watching them out the window, they are riding their bikes and uh, I'm anxious to go out and join them. So I'm gonna um, record today's show and hopefully have a chat with you guys that's not interrupted by them. And then I'll head outside and do some spindle spinning. I've been working on my color studies. Um, I've got my Gotland on my Turkish spindle and I've been taking it around outside in the cul-de-sac. And I don't actually have it here to show you because it's in the garage. I keep my spindling projects that I'm actively working on in the cul-de-sac um, in the garage so that I they're there and if I forget them, I don't have to come back into the house to, to um, get them while the kids are outside. The way our neighborhood is, we live in like a, a double, a double cul-de-sac so you come down our street and there's a cul-de-sac and then you go up another street and it's a cul-de-sac as well so we have very little traffic that comes into our cul-de-sac other than people who get lost because everybody gets lost in our neighborhood and locals and everybody knows there's tons of kids on our street and go they come in really slow which is nice so the kids spend a lot of time out there with the other neighborhood kids and play and ride their bikes and street chalk and all that different stuff. So I'm watching them now. Mike is out there with them. Don't worry, they're not unsupervised out there. And uh, I'm anxious to go and join them. So I hope that everybody's doing really well. Uh, welcome to anybody who is a new viewer of the show. Thank you so much for joining and for try giving the show a try. For those who are new, um, or for those who are returning and for our Patreon subscribers of the show, thank you so much for continuing to stick with me and watching the show in week in and week out. I really appreciate you being here and I just wanna say thank you. I want to make it just a couple of housekeeping announcements and then we're going to get on to with the show. Uh, Tour de Fleece starts July 1st. It runs until July 23rd. There's two rest days and there are two um, challenge days. For those who have not checked out the Ravelry group yet, please head over to the Ravelry group to read more. There is an official Tour de Fleece um, group on Ravelry that you can search for and you can check that out when you have a moment. But we have a team. Um, Nina and Becca are going to be our co-captains and they will be um, in and out of the Ravelry group and the chatter thread. We also have set up a Slack channel for those who would like to participate. It will be deleted at the end of July, beginning of August and um, it's free for anybody to join. So there is a link in the Ravelry group in the Tour de Fleece thread for that uh, invitation from me to you. So please head on into the general channel on the Slack channel, introduce yourself and let us know what your goals are for the tour and we will start spinning on July 1st. I am planning, <laughs> fingers crossed, to spin up a sweaters quantity of some llama and silk blend that I have. I'm hoping to work on it on my match list, but we will see. Um, my match list currently has my combo spin on it, which I will show you today and I'm not sure if I'm going to have my bobbins free yet, but we'll see. My goal is to spin the distance of the tour. So the Tour de France is um, 3,516 kilometers long or 2,200 miles. And I'm hoping to spin that amount of yardage, but we'll see, because that's kind of like what um, Spinzilla is like, and that's getting up there. I usually spin about five or 6,000 miles for the uh, yards, sorry, for the, um, uh, Spinzilla, and I'm not sure if I want to tackle spinning 2,200 miles in July. I'll I'll see how it goes. No pressure. If I do it, great. And if not, that's okay too. I haven't even started like sampling, so I'm a ways off from actually getting started. The other thing that I wanted to mention was there will be a live streaming date coming up in the next few weeks. Please stay tuned for that. If you're a Patreon subscriber, it will probably be Monday, July 12th, or sorry, June 12th, um, either in the morning or the evening. I'm gonna put a poll up on the Ravelry group and you guys can tell me if you'd prefer the morning or if you'd prefer the evening Pacific Standard Time. So depending on your time zone, if you guys could let me know, that would be great. So watch for that in the Ravelry group. And lastly, um, the show starting next week, so starting June 1st, or maybe it'll be June 7th. 
yeah, June 7th, because the show, this show will air Wednesday, May 31st, and then um, there will be a show July 1st. For the rest of the summer, so June, July, and August, the show will be aired twice per month. So it will air on the first of the, the first week of the month, and it will air on the third week of the month. The third week of the month, as per usual, will be our live streaming show. And I'm also going to move our Patreon um, draw, monthly draw, to that show as well. So I'll do that live on the show on the third week of the month. So stay tuned. The shows will, will be slightly longer because of having only two per month for the summer. And I hope that um, it's a chance for me to have a little bit of a break from, from recording every week. And um, also just summer schedules and the way that things are here, it's a little bit um, more doable for me to do it twice a month and make it a bit longer. For this show, I have a finished sock. <laughs> um, I actually have a new cast on to show you and I wanted to chat a little bit about my uh, combo spin that I've been working on and a little bit more about hand dominance and how that's going for me because that really got people chatting. So I hope that you enjoy the show. I thought that I would start with my hand spun knitting first because um, it's right here and I can do that. So the first thing that I wanted to show you was one of my socks is actually finished. I chatted about socks back in the live stream in May, um, just a couple weeks ago. And I had shown you my progress on my one sock. This is my superwash wool that I speckle dyed. This is all I've gotten done on it. Um, I actually have only done a couple of rows since that show. And the reason is because I've been sort of working on my fugly sock. So this is um, Smith & New Superwash BFL. And I showed some photos of what the original braid looked like of this yarn um, back on episode, I guess it would have been episode 70 if you want to go back and check that out. Um, and so the first sock is done. I don't have it on a sock blocker yet. I literally just um, cast it off yesterday at work. Um, I did two by two ribbing. As soon as I cast off the ribbing, I realized that I hadn't done enough ribbing and I needed to actually double it and do another inch of ribbing. So I'm actually going to undo the cast off and add another inch of ribbing. But I turned the heel at work yesterday and um, I tried them on, which is how I, I know that I need to do an extra inch on the sock to fit up over my ankle. My project bag just went into my coffee. <laughs> Oh, it's just been one of those weeks, um, and it's only Sunday. Um, the yeah, so it turned out really well. I'm really happy with how the colors worked up. I'm, I'm still calling this my fugly sock because the colors are, while they're really pleasant, and I had a lot of compliments on them at work, and you guys were really kind about them. Um, the colors are just awesome for socks to play around with those color combinations. But I still wish I hadn't um, stripped the fiber in half and that I had just spun it end to end because the pencil roving just ended up being too thin and the color repeats ended up being too thin. But that said, they're really cute on and I'm happy with them. Um, I did an inch of knitting up the back after turning the fish lips kiss heel, which she instructs you to do in the pattern. And then I added, um, and then I just did an inch of ribbing, two by two ribbing. And like I said, it's not enough. I need to undo the cast on and do at least another inch of ribbing. But I think before I cast them off this time, I'll try them on and then I'll cast off. Um, you're going to hear our air conditioner in the background. I hope it's not too annoying. It's a little bit of a hum, so um, excuse the noise. So that is that. Um, the next thing that I thought I would show you is my new cast on. I was working on the marigold cowl by my friend Nina, and I had put it down, and I didn't know where I was in the lace pattern, and I hadn't worked on it for a number of months. And I decided to rip it out. It's a pattern that I really want to make, but I could see that the lace pattern was being completely lost in um, the patterning of this yarn. So I ripped it out and I was looking for a pattern that I could work on 
one day when I was sitting outside with the kids last week and I had nothing to work on. I didn't want to do any spindling. I was just feeling a bit blase about everything and didn't really want to work on anything but wanted to do something. And so I ripped it out and I'm actually almost finished the second ball of yarn. So I blasted through the first ball and I'm on to the second and I'm just doing a vanilla shawl. So this is very similar to my blanket shawl that I made out of the textured um, bats and I'll flash a photo here of what that looked like so that you guys can see and it was just a huge blanket shawl it was just plain um, stockinette stitch for the body and then a garter stitch border I knit until I was almost out of yarn but also to the point where it was just getting it, if it was any bigger it would be hard to wear and so I'm just doing that again um, I'm doing just a plain middle uh, make one right and make one left down down the center um, in the center stitch I did a garter tab cast on with three stitches to make a three stitch garter border and then when I got to about where did I start making them here so this is the beginning of the shawl and then when I got to where, where these fingers are by my right hand um, your left I started increasing on the wrong side every fourth row so I would do a straight wrong side row just knit three purl across knit three and then um, do my increased rows on the right side and then on the wrong side on the following row I increased on the wrong side so knit, th uh, knit three purl one right purl across purl one left knit three and I've been doing that every fourth row and it's mostly just to make the the wings of the shawl a little bit longer so you can see how it's starting to curve around um, and it's because the wing is getting longer and I'm hoping that when I wrap it around my neck it'll be easier to wrap around because the wings will just be a little little bit longer um, in terms of the body of the shawl because I find with straight triangle shawls you end up with all this bulk across your front but it's really hard to pull those um, tails around unless you've got those extra stitches so fingers crossed we'll see how it goes I have four 50 gram balls of this but my fourth ball if you'll remember me um, talking about it on a previous show is quite a bit thicker so my plan all plans go awry but we'll see my plan is that when I get to the end of the third ball I'll switch to larger needles I'm knitting this on US size 8 or 5 millimeter needles I'm going to increase to a 6 or a 6.5 millimeter needle and then I'll knit until I run out of yarn basically on that thicker ball um, so it might actually make quite a big garter stitch border that's quite pleasant I may or may not increase on either edge I may just increase down the center so we'll see how that goes and I'll keep you posted I'm actually really enjoying it I didn't realize that I would be enjoying it quite so much I was sort of um, I wasn't sure when I when I switched over to doing just a plain vanilla patterning if I would get bored really quickly but in the end it's actually been really great and I'm really enjoying it so I think some of it is that I just um, needed a simple project and I didn't really have anything and I wasn't really feeling working on the socks I don't like turning a heel when I'm outside watching the kids because if I have to drop my knitting and put it down immediately I worry that I'm not gonna be able to pick it back up again right away or that a needle is gonna get lost and all my picked up stitches are gonna get lost so that was that my combo spin I finished the first bobbin I'm actually halfway through the second bobbin and I'm about halfway through my bag of fiber I feel like this bag is the never-ending bag of fiber I feel like every time I reach in there's more fiber and I think it's because as you reach in your fiber gets fluffed up and so you know all of a sudden you've got like a full bag of fiber and you're like I thought I was spinning this down but it keeps growing <laughs> and it's just because you're you know picking up the fiber and pulling it apart to grab your next strip and it's like oh more 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 so um, I am making some progress um, I might add more to this bobbin I'm, I'm not um, I'm not sure how much I need to divide between my three bobbins um, I'm gonna spin the second bobbin to the same weight as this bobbin so that I have roughly the same amount of fiber and then I'll do that with the third bobbin and then I'll see how much fiber I have left because I have a whole other four uh, eight ounces of this fiber still to spin this is only the first four uh, the first eight ounces and this is a big spin so the plan is probably to eventually end up with um, six six bobbins and then I'll do two three ply yarns for two massive skeins and then um, I'll have three ply yarn that's sort of my plan 
and instead of two ply so it won't give me as much yardage but it'll give me a nice round three ply and I'm actually thinking about doing a cabled shawl I'm I'm kind of abandoning the sweater idea I just don't wear my hand spun hand knit sweaters I don't wear my hand knit sweaters um, it is too hot here even in the winter it's so mild and with the rain I'm often wearing my rain jacket I'm just trying to be really honest about what I'll wear and what I won't wear um, and so I'm thinking that I'll either do a vest that I will wear or I'll do a shawl that's um, cabled that I can wear out in the evening or wear out when I'm with the kids and it's dry but a bit cold so that's kind of my plan in terms of the hand dominance um, you guys that really got you guys talking and got you guys thinking and I received lots and lots of comments I read them all one of the questions that I received was um, if you need to be doing your long draw with your with your dominant hand as well and the answer is yes but maybe not in the way that the question came across so with long draw um, if your right hand is doing all of the work for worsted spinning then you would be drafting with your right hand but if your work is doing being done by your dominant hand in long draw then your right hand would if you're right-handed then your right hand would actually be behind you and you'd be pinching with your left hand and drawing the fiber back because in long draw your that hand that's drawing back the fiber is actually doing all the work so I've been, like I said, I've been practicing with this spin. I've been really making a conscious effort to do it. I'm still finding it's really hard. And when you look at my bobbin, it is so thick and thin for me and not consistent for me. Um, it's part of the reason why I'm going to do a three ply because a lot of those inconsistencies and things that I'm not happy about because I'm practicing with my other hand will be hidden in the three ply. So, um, fingers crossed that I start to get it it still does not feel natural at all and the funny thing is is when I'm spindle spinning I actually draft with my right hand so I was playing with my Turkish spindle like I mentioned at the beginning of the show and working with the Gotland for the color studies and the breed study which is a lot like spinning Wensleydale by the way I'm finding it's really a lot like Wensleydale and I'm, I'm torn about maybe leaving my yar yarn that I'm spinning I might full it and leave it as singles <coughs> Um, but I, so when I was drafting the other day out in the cul-de-sac on my Turkish spindle, I was really surprised at the fact that my right hand was doing all the work. So why is it not easy on the wheel to switch? I'm not sure. I think a lot of it is just how you, I've been spinning for so long that, and I've spun so many bobbins of singles because when I first learned I didn't know how to ply so I spun bobbin after bobbin after bobbin of singles and so I just kept doing the short backward which is why it's so natural for me and so having my my right arm constantly moving backward but I'm gonna chat with a friend of mine because I was thinking about it and if you're doing short backward and you're pinching and you're drawing back with your right hand and then smoothing to slide down to your next place where you're gonna draft back from I was thinking it's a lot like long draw like I was thinking that actually your right hand is doing all of the work when you're drafting back because otherwise you're gonna draft past the distance of draft versus inchworm where you're holding the fiber in your left hand if you're right hand dominant and drafting forward 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 again watching that staple length so I'm going to chat with her a little bit about that because a few people um, had mentioned that that they do short forward with their their right hand dominant so they do short forward with their right hand with their fiber being held in their left and then for short backward they hold their fiber in their left hand and right hand drafts back very interesting so I'm really interested to hear this conversation continue. I'm really interested in your experience and what you have found. So please keep the comments coming and it's a conversation that will continue over the next, um, probably over the summer because it's something that I'm going to continue to practice and work on. I think that's it. Um, I feel like that's sort of the end, of the, all that I had to talk about. This, this hand dominance thing has me completely distracted. <laughs> I'm really enjoying working um, at my wheel and figuring it all out and figuring the mechanics of it out. I am finding and I'm interested to hear from anybody else who has um, experienced the same and tried to switch 
their drafting technique. I'm very interested to know if you have experienced any hand fatigue, not pain and not carpal tunnel pain or anything like that, but I find my hands get more tired when I'm drafting forward. Like my, my right hand isn't used to doing that work. So I'm interested to hear from you guys about your fatigue when it comes to spinning and sitting at your wheels. Cause you'd think like it's very sedentary, you're just sitting there, you're just treadling. But I was chatting with somebody else this past week over the phone um, who spins on a single treadle wheel and she was telling me that she gets very fatigued on her double treadle wheel and, and has decided to sell it um, as a result because she finds it so tiring and it was something that I hadn't really thought about before. So I'd love to hear from you guys how you find your, um, not wellness around spinning, but but if you get fatigued or not, I'm, I'm very interested to hear about that. So until next week, I hope you have a wonderful weekend, a wonderful week and happy spinning. Bye everyone.